Welcome back, everybody, to A Little Faith. This is a podcast that's put on by the Williamsburg Christadelphian Foundation. And today I have the great pleasure of being with my good friend, Christian Opitz. Hello. It's Hello, great to Christian. be here. Great to be here. Thank yes, you. I'm Thank you, yeah, I'm glad that we can we can connect. And I've I've known you for maybe a decade. Oh, maybe it's about right. Yeah, but <laughs> but there's there's some people listening to this who probably don't know you. So why why don't you tell us a few things about yourself? Well, um, my name's Christian. I'm 18 years old, freshman in uh, in college right now, going going to school for film. Love working with video. That's my main thing. I play a lot of video games, and uh, <laughs> I'm interested yeah. in uh, psychology and mental illnesses and stuff. So mm. that's my main thing, I'd yeah. say, is uh, is film. And then, yeah. What um what what got you, what got you into film? Well, um, I uploaded my first video to YouTube on December 31st, 2011. I remember, remember oh. the day. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> and then th- it was like some some like Minecraft video or something. You got like seven likes, and you knew. I got one like. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and twelve um, views. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I don't know. Just ever since then, I just liked I liked sharing I liked sharing stuff, sharing videos on the internet, and then. From that, I, I got in better at editing videos, and mm. now just you know I've been I've been editing for probably six years and oh, wow. professional software, and I feel really comfortable with that. And yeah, that's that's what got me into it. Yeah. funny enough. Yeah, that's awesome. You're definitely a very creative person. Another hat that Christian wears, and that th- this kind of is in the stream of film and TV is that uh, Christian's actually the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire every now and then. <laughs> That's right, Bible edition. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. the uh, um, Operation Anesimus uh, Bible camp uh, that I go to every every year, I like to, uh, I like to run the <laughs> Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game night. Complete <laughs> with sound effects. Oh yeah. Um, dim lights. And, and prizes. <laughs> and whenever Matt's there, he likes to sing along to the music in the background. I love that. Da, 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. Makes it all the more intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, uh, Christian and I, I lived in uh, Virginia for a number of years. And uh, Christian, you're originally from Virginia. Right. Yeah, I still I, I live in Virginia in Charlottesville. I just came up here to Jersey for school. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Virginia, Virginia will always be my home. Yeah. That's where I met Matt. <laughs> the Richmond Chapel. Yeah, I've had the the great opportunity of getting to know you and know your family. And one thing that has really been a central tenant, or maybe a core thread in our relationship, and I think in some of our most profound conversations, has been around mental health. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, that was something that when we started talking about sitting down and having a conversation, that's something that uh, really kind of spoke to you as far as wanting to kind of have a, a conversation about uh, mental health and maybe shining a light for people who might not have ever experienced any sort of mental health conditions or maybe yeah. have a loved one with a mental health concern but cannot necessarily relate from a first person perspective we talked about having a conversation about bringing some of that to life and mm-hmm. bringing um, lived experience with mental health, either in your in our own life or in the lives of people that we dearly love, into the arena of faith and how faith intersects with that and how faith comes and goes or is a great source of strength or... Yeah, how right. how faith kind of is involved in that. So yeah. I think I think that's the direction where our conversation is going to go. Mm-hmm. So, with that in mind, I guess I will will ask you this kind of opening question into the topic, which is: Tell me a little bit about your experience with mental health. Right. So yeah, with me, um, I would say spirituality does play a big role with my mental health in general and with uh uh and just with my with i have a mood disorder called cyclothymia which is a, a mild form of bipolar disorder so uh just the way that the mood that that the mood cycles from like 
a low depression and to an elevated mood, hypomania. Both of those different, and then anxiety plays a big part too, but uh, both of those moods, mood episodes, spirituality plays a big role in both of them mm. and in different ways. And I think a lot of, the, a lot of people have experienced depression and mm-hmm. a lot of people can relate to feeling kind of like, you know, inadequate in those times spiritually. Mm. And that's, that's something that, uh, that I kind of wanted to go into. You know, and, and, and it can be tough, and it's really, it's really nice to have other people that have experienced so similar things mm-hmm. and just people understanding what goes on inside my head. I like, to, you know, I like to open up about it to people personally. That's really just been something within the past year for me, though, um, because you know, the, I'm, I'm at the age where disorders like that are on set. So I'm still I'm still really getting used to it and everything, and I don't know everything about it, you know, yeah. about how it affects me. It's been a big learning experience about myself, especially spiritually. So you, okay, so you mentioned a couple of things, and when you were talking, that I kind of want to go back to, and one is you put this word of uh, inadequacy, mm. and in, with the experience of depression, mm-hmm. for somebody who has maybe never experienced depression, mm. or for somebody who hasn't thought about adding a spiritual lens or seeing that that experience with a spiritual mindset can you talk a bit more about what what that feels like yeah absolutely the way i normally like to describe it scientifically uh, is because i think that helps people understand a little better what sure depression is is um a decreased amount of dopamine in your brain and then uh you know what hypomania is which would be the other side for me with with cyclothymia or bipolar is um an increased amount of dopamine so you know, it's kind of like opposites. And so with the, the depression side of it, personally, I feel, I often feel like, you know, I'm constantly beating myself up over things that I, I feel like I'm, I'm not doing right spiritually. And I don't often think about the grace and forgiveness, the constant grace and forgiveness that, that um, God mm-hmm. has for me. Mm-hmm. And instead I, I focus on everything that I do wrong and all of my sin. And I kind of wallow in that and, and dwell within that and it's uh it's it's very emotional and 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 in a way it is spiritually connecting because um i feel an emotional connection to god through that feeling but at the same time i don't let christ carry my my burden and and instead i i lay it all on myself and it's all just a feeling of just i'm not good enough yeah you brought up this kind of paradox in, in your own in your experience, and that it sounded like you were describing like yourself in like a black hole, maybe like very un, like unable to see outside of your mm-hmm. mistakes and unable to see the you mentioned the grace and the forgiveness that's all that's around you. I think you, you talked kind of in like in a in an at all times kind of way, and you mentioned how you don't let Jesus carry that burden. Right, right. But you men, you also mentioned feeling connected. Yeah. So that's that's tell like tell me more about that. Right. Um. Yeah. No. I figured that that might be confusing. Uh, how could I how could I explain that? So. I think what it is is just not not only the fact that in a depressive state it's all very emotional. I'm just full of of emotions, of negative emotions, and so with those emotions comes kind of um, like if you're like reading a passage from the Bible and it's so beautiful that you cry, right? That's that's all you know. That's I, I think a lot of people have had that experience. Can you give us um, an example? You know, like I've I've um, even before I ever had. Uh, symptoms of cyclothymia I, I was, uh, or of depression, anything like that. I remember reading in Revelation just, you know, kind of like the imagery of like the throne and, you know, the, like that idea. And I just remember I was in such an emotional state for, you know, whatever reason it was. It just, it just made me feel very connected and, and emotional. It's like, this is what I want, you know. So just the fact that in depression it's by nature emotional, that sort of creates a spiritual connection. Does that make sense? Yeah, so are you saying... And also just because my thoughts revolve around the fact that I feel inadequate spiritually, Mm -hmm. um, because my thoughts are revolving around that, that also kind of feeds into it. It's it's not 
an accurate thought process that I go through that I'm not good enough for God. Yeah. You know, that's not a, that's not an accurate thought process, but it's just it's emotionally um, connecting still. So that's the way I perceive it. When you're describing this like emotional connection at moments in time when you feel incredibly inadequate, your faith sounds very like visceral and like primal almost. It's like this mm. like really dark but deep rooted right. sense of connection. Yeah, um, yeah. It, well, I think you know it's just growing up in the environment that I have. Uh, just you know going I going to you know meeting every weekend and and for my entire life and everything, it's so deeply rooted within me that, um, you know, luckily that doesn't go away during, during a, a depressive episode. And while it's, and I can go into how it's very heightened, you know, the opposite during when I'm amped up and it's very, you know, it's like a very, very spiritual in a positive way experience. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away when I'm in a depressive episode because of how, how deeply rooted it is in me, I think is, is a big reason mm -hmm. for that. I'm finding it to be kind of, you know, difficult to explain to somebody that might not have experienced something like this. Mm. Um, but um, I think it's just the fact that it's a very emotional experience in a depressive episode, and I mm. think that just the fact that it's emotional uh, is what what makes it more spiritual in mm. some ways. Okay, so we talked about depression a little bit. Mm. We'll probably come back to it. Yeah. Oh, here's a question. Um, when when you're feeling depressed, do you feel like hopeless? Is that something that you feel? Right. Uh, yeah. I it there that is definitely an aspect to it. Is like, and you know, it's like that's like one of the main aspects. And I I don't generally go into like a like a full blown completely lethargic kind of depression that mm. that some people might may have experienced. You know, it's not like a complete loss of everything mm -hmm. but i it's just it, it is it is very it's still very unstable and very like you know hopelessness is probably yeah the best word to describe it just the, the exact opposite of of optimism in any way mm -hmm. I, I i feel like everything that's difficult in my life is only going to get more difficult and feel i feel like nobody nobody likes me and and people mm -hmm. only you know pretend to be nice to me when they do and a bunch of stuff that just isn't true and it's and it's all just circles around in my head and makes me feel hopeless in a yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. And, I th and I think with depression and people who have experiences with, de with depression, I'd, I have had long bouts of depression over the course of my life. And I think at those times, things were very dark, things were very hopeless, and I felt very distant from God and like I didn't matter to anyone around me and I sure as all as all be not matter to God. So it's so it's interesting that you speak of the sense of connection and that even in this very dark place, like you still have what sounds like a grounding wire mm. to something deeper inside of you or around you that is keeping you close to God. Is yeah, that, is that right? it, it is. It is right. But it's also the hopelessness feeling kind of like feeds into me thinking that I'm just not good enough. I can't be chosen by God because I'm doing everything wrong. And that grounding of faith is still there. But I feel like I don't deserve it and that I, you know, that it's not something that so sometimes I feel like it's not something that's worth striving for in those times. And, and, there, and then there's doubt about that because I feel inadequate, you know. And that's something that you still hold on to? Like, faith is still something that you hold on to yeah, all the time? Yeah, it is. It is. But I feel like I shouldn't a lot of the time because I feel like it's something I don't deserve. That God's grace and forgiveness Absolutely. is something you don't deserve? Right. Or faith is something you don't deserve? Well, for me, they go hand in hand in a way. Yeah, so, yeah, kind yeah. of both, you know? Okay. Yeah. Because faith itself grounds me. So, I see faith as a gift from God. You know, the fact that there's something that can, you know, I can have hope, faith, hope, you know? So yeah, so I would say that I feel like I don't deserve to have that grounding when I'm depressive episode a lot of the time. So it's still there and it's good that it's still there and it's something that I'm thinking about, but not in the, you know, not in a good way because I'm in such a bad headspace, you know? Is that, is that something that you've experienced? 
when you've been in yeah. depressive episodes yeah. yeah i think like in my mind the the, the word that's coming that word, the word that's popping out is the word grasp like i think that i'm trying to grasp faith and I, i'm not like holding it but it's just out of reach and like my fingertips are like just kissing it mm. just just barely touching it right. but i can't wrap my my hand and let alone myself around it as a sense of anchor and as a sense of grounding that's a word that i think has been i've used it and you used it and i think that's kind of yeah an, an appropriate way to think about it in mm. like a depressive episode right right so yeah and so i mean when you're in that when you're in that space is there anything that you can do or is there anything that anybody says or anything that you think about that that makes faith more inviting to you in that space that makes faith that allows you to feel that comfort even if it's momentary oftentimes i will try to when i know somebody that that struggles with depression and and you know when they're currently struggling with depression i try to think of what would i want somebody to say to me and i i still find it very difficult because there's not a lot somebody can say to me that you know because everything somebody says i'm going to twist it in my head to make it negative somehow and so that can it can be really hard to to navigate you know what to what to say to somebody but just saying something and being there for the person is the most important thing it doesn't matter it as long as you say as long as there's something that 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 you're doing for the person and there you know there are quote unquote right and wrong things to say i guess you know it's all subjective but like saying I think uh, this is something that you touched upon in in, uh, in the mental health episode with with Levi is uh, being there and saying something to the person. No matter, it, it's just better than saying nothing. If there are brothers and sisters that that struggle with depression, that you know of, make it known to them that you are there for them, and mm -hmm. that's the that's the most important thing. The probably the, the my favorite thing that you said in that in that mental health episode was about letting us help you. You know. Let, um, mm, right. If you're helping us with our mental health, helps us feel less like a burden in a way to, to help you back. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. like, I love helping people anyway. So just, yeah. you know, that is a, that's a very important thing as well. Those, those are ways that you could be there for me during a depressive episode, I would say. Yeah, and you, you mentioned earlier in our conversation about something that you're coming to realize is, is helpful for you and something that you've been exploring is Oh, like opening up to other people. Can you talk a little bit about how what it's like sharing, in the spirit of sharing, sharing something, uh, a struggle that you have or something that's going on with your brain chemistry and how that helps grow faith? Right. I think one of the main aspects about it for me is that people have heard not, not a lot of people have heard of cyclothymia, but people have heard bipolar disorder. You know, most people know, mm -hmm. know that word, but they, they don't know. There, there's kind of a stigma around it, and people don't, a lot, most people don't really know what it consists of. I think a lot of that is because we don't talk about, even though it's very common, I think one in 40 or more than one in 40 people in America have uh, bipolar disorder, and, and it's not something that's really discussed a lot, and I think, I think that's why. So for me, when I open up about uh, and explain to people what it what it is I think I feel like I'm I'm helping other people who have that struggle hopefully be more open and not be as as afraid to come out as uh, whatever mental illness they may struggle with you right. know because yeah. if I'm open about it then helping other people understand what it is then hopefully it'll be more inviting for other people to, to open up about it as well. Mm -hmm. So so there's that. I, I like for people to understand what's going on in, in my brain when it comes to something that I can't control because I just, I do unfortunately think a lot about what other people think about me. I don't want them to think that it's harder for me. I don't want to say that I can't control my actions, but it's harder for me to just do the right thing sometimes or just yeah. sometimes it's harder for me to just act normal because I don't always feel normal, and, and I like people to understand that. I think, I think that's what it comes down to a lot of the time. Yeah, and, and you, you have such a, like, a, such a thoughtfulness about a lot of things in life, but especially uh, who you are in this present moment, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that takes a lot of honing and a lot of 
practice to be mindful of the words that are coming out of my mouth and the actions that I'm doing are these, you know, what are the influences that are going on? And is one of those influences mental health related? You mentioned the, the phrase out of your control. And I think like with mental, with a lot of mental health, A, it's something that we can't see. It says mm. it's, it's invisible minus, you know, brain scans that they might be able to do. But, you know, day in and day out, like you just don't see the, the shifting tides of chemicals that are going on exactly. in your brain. Yeah. And yeah. that's something that you, as you, you know, have mentioned is out of your control so how mm. so how does how does the out of control factor of mental health impact your faith yeah so that i guess i would preface that with a couple of things first of all I, I would say it's not it's not all just the fact that it's something that you can't see it's also the fact that how are you supposed to control something cognitively that is affecting you cognitively that is very difficult because you know it's like it's very circular you know yeah. um, it's all it's all just a struggle within your own head you know like you can cognitively solve problems that are outside of your own head but then when you when you're already impaired cognitively you know it's like it makes it very difficult uh, and the other thing is is that um, with with specifically with mood disorders while being mental illnesses that they they are technically diseases because it is you know a change in the chemicals in your brain. It's a, it is a physical thing in your brain. It's a disease and it helps, it helps to remember that um, when it comes to anything, when it comes to faith or just, just anything that I, when, when I'm trying to stabilize myself. I think you said earlier, you know, it feels like it's just, it's like unstable ground that you're standing on. But it helps to remember that it is just a chemical imbalance in, in my brain and mm -hmm. the, the things that it's making me think, the almost delusions that I go into in a depressive episode about guilt and, ina and inadequacy and stuff like that, that's just the chemicals in my brain making me think that and that helps a lot just to remember this isn't me, this is bipolar, I have bipolar. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, thing, one of the things that you mentioned there in like finding stability is being able to separate what is brain chemistry coloring in your reality. Right. And where do I where do I end and where does my disorder begin? Exactly. Yeah. And some of some of that can be very black and white, but I think um, a lot of it's gray. Mm. And I think a lot of thoughts can happen mm -hmm. in that gray space mm. at either end of rock bottom depression or skyrocketing sleepless nights. Right. And especially if somebody has a manic episode or somebody has a very dark, deep, depressive episode mm. and then comes back from that, they often look back at their life. And I can speak from personal experience with, with some of these pieces. They look back at how they interacted with people that maybe people they deeply care about and maybe they said things that they deeply regret and even still cannot parse through what was mental illness and what was right. me yeah and it's just stuck in the gray and and, it, and and for me that's where like faith really plays i think a, an important role hmm. is the notion the, the 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 idea of trust behind faith and trust like deeply trusting other people to help me interpret but also deeply trusting god in god that there will be clarity in the future and that making sense of all that isn't necessarily so important hmm. possibly well you know i i don't normally i don't normally think too much about it, it's more so i'm sort of thankful for the way my mental health is honestly even though it's not you know i'm not considered mentally healthy but i'm thankful for that because i think it makes me i think it makes me unique in a way and i think you know i experience these you know unique sensations and unique periods where that, that a lot of people don't. I, I try to look on the bright side. I'm just interested in how like how your relationship with God and Jesus, how that's impacted by you having moments where you don't know if this is the real Christian. I do think a lot of the time when I'm in um, more of kind of like a like a manic state that I, I think of like um, you know, I, I'm usually, you know, because I don't really, you know, with cyclothymia, I don't go into full-blown mania. So when I'm usually stable enough to sort of think like, 
you know, I wonder, I wonder how much of this is me. I try, I try my hardest while it can be hard. I try to direct all that, you know, manic energy into, into doing what's right. And, and I'm usually able to do that. And so, you know, instead of thinking too much about what is me and what is not, I try to make what is, you know, not me into what I would want me to do, <laughs> if that makes sense, you know. Yeah. But then when it, com when it does come to that gray area, because, you know, it, it, is, it is there, it's like, I think about responsibility in a way. It's hard, it's sort of hard because it's like, when I'm doing something that's very difficult for me to control, um, how much of this am I really responsible for in the eyes of God? You know what I mean? And that's like, I feel like that's very nuanced and very, like, a very difficult thing to grasp. Impulsivity is, is a defining feature of mania and hypomania. And it's like, well, how much of that did I really choose to do? What gives me comfort in that region is the fact that I know that God understands what's going on in my head. And I know yeah. I, he's not going to look at, you know, he's not going to look like from like a human perspective, like, Oh, you know, why are there I can't... 47 Amazon Prime boxes by your door? Like... <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, <laughs> or, you know, something, something maybe more along the lines of like, why did he say, you know, why did he say that to this person? That right. was, that was very wrong. You know, it's, yeah. it's uh, obviously God understands what's going on in my head and he, and he knows it's hard and, and it's not an excuse, you know, for, for things that I do that's sure. wrong. But I, it, it gives me comfort to know that God doesn't see things from a human perspective. He, he knows yeah. exactly what's going on in my head from a spiritual perspective and, are you, and what I, what's in my heart. Yeah. And are you, ab are you able to tap into that when you are a low or if you're in a high? Are you able to, in those more extreme places, like find, like find that thought and anchor yourself into it? I think in a depressive episode, I anchor myself too much in that thought. And I think like, man, I am, you know... I, I'm, I'm, I do all these things that are so wrong and I don't think about how like, oh, you know, God understand, like God gets what's going on in my head. I don't think about that. I think, so I anchor myself too much in, in, in that kind of thought in a negative way. And then when I'm in more of a manic, you know, amped mm -hmm. up state, I, I think I don't really think about that stuff very much at all. I just think I'm great. I'm the greatest. I, I can do anything. And, superhero. and I, yeah, like I'm a superhero, you know, everything. Yeah. And, and like, everything's going to work out. And, and I feel like super spiritually soup. Like I feel, I actually feel like, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm not even human. Like I'm like, there's like something more to it, you know, and I feel very spiritually connected and excited about everything but you know specifically like excited about my faith and and I try my hardest to direct that into actually doing what's right instead of you know thinking that everything I'm doing is right which is what it often is it's like thinking yeah. everything I'm doing is good no yeah, matter what very, it is very common very but, common to but I yeah I, I think I have I have kind of been able to refine it I'll anchor a thought in my head where it's like okay you know I should uh, offer to you know help people with stuff because you know, like oftentimes if I'm not impulsive I'm uh, you know if it, I, I use the impulsivity where I'll be like I'll offer to help somebody later with something you know or if I'll be like if you need any help with this you know and then when I'm not in a manic state then I have that responsibility later to do it and then so I'm doing something good you know what I mean <laughs> yeah yeah so um, so I do I am able to tap into it uh, okay can we talk about coming back from a, a very high spiritual place. So grandiosity is something <laughs> that's common to manic episodes, mm -hmm. feeling like you are the best version of yourself you have ever been. Yep. And yep. feeling and finding it difficult to relate to people. Yes. That's um, the bad part. That's like one yeah. of the only bad parts. <laughs> because it's like it's mostly euphoric. Yeah. Right. And then there's like just kind of like a disconnect from other people is kind of, you know. But I, I think there's also uh, a, an experience that um, many people have, which is in this, in this very kind of superhero place of mind, faith ignites and is like a wildfire. Mm -hmm. And you might start to think that you are, you're seeing the, the finer details around you and you're interpreting them as spiritual messages. Right. And like you yeah. feel like it you, can get dangerous. Then, yeah. Because. And so that, I mean, feeling super connected with the divine is a great feeling. But then when you, people get more sleep or they get on a, a medication that 
brings them to a stable place. Yeah. Or it's shift into a depressive episode or anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, then you know, then you're, then you find yourself standing in an entirely different place. Right. And in a reality that is less colorful mm. in a in a in a faith way. You're very articulate with your experience. And I think uh, I really like that language of st- like finding yourself a because you're finding yourself a lot with mental illness. Um, day by day, but finding yourself standing in, in the same place, but feeling very different about mm. your faith, and feeling very different about your relationship with God, right. and feeling different about your relationship with other people in a faith way. How do you find like faith equilibrium in this when people are fluctuating from anxious state to not anxious, depressive to not, you know? Yeah. Does, does faith stay the same and it just holds its gr- holds its place or is it something that's that's changing yeah. <laughs> dynamically oh, definitely right? so yeah i think i think that it's pretty much impossible uh for somebody with um a mood disorder or you know disorder characterized by fluctuating moods at least in you know at least with with bipolar disorder at least with cyclothymia it's uh pretty much impossible to find stability at least the you know the amount of faith and and I can I can liken it to you know somebody who who may be mentally healthy or you know um, may not have a mental illness Mm -hmm. Uh, I can liken it to just feeling spiritually high or spiritually low I see it you know it feels the same way Mm and in in whether I'm you know in a mood episode or which mood episode I'm in or, or, or if I'm not, you know, it's, it's the same sort of spiritual high feeling. It just happens to usually be congruent with whatever, whatever mood episode I'm in. Then with, with a depressive episode, it's like, I still believe and have faith, but it's just, you know, it's just not a spirit. It's like a spiritual, I don't want to say it's a spiritual low, but it's like a spiritual, spiritual low. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. that's, but see, and that's not the same for everybody. Cause I know a lot of, a lot of people with, with depression will go into doubt. I, you know, this is something I, I probably should have said earlier that, that I feel like that's something that's more unique to me is that um, a lot of people in depressive episodes just start doubting and lose their faith. But what grounds me personally is the fact that I do always have faith. So I know that no matter where I am, God is always going to be there, even though I have I have doubts as, as everybody goes through. Um, I know that that God will stick with me throughout my life and and that um, I won't stray away from that. And so that's what grounds me, just remembering that instead of being like, man, I can't, I can't be uh, in a spiritual high. Like it's like almost like a, a dependence on it. You know, if I'm not in a, if I'm, if I'm, you know, not in a mood episode, it's like a dependence on, mm. on something like that to have a spiritual high. Mm. Um, and uh, what, what kind of, you know, grounds me from, from that is the fact that like. It, it's always something that will be there. I all like God will always be there. My faith will always be there. So that that's what grounds me in faith, with the spiritual highs and lows and and all that. Do you, can you remember or do you know, the time when that thought, sparked and has stuck about God always being with you and you hold, having that, and holding on to it throughout. In all, re- in all times, kind of thing. Do you yeah, remember, it, remember it was actually kind of a. It was a more recent thing, just as like the my mental health journey really has been. It uh, it was it was a, it was something more recently that I that I recognized, and it was while I was doubting that I recognized it, and it was while I was in a depressive state that I recognized it because um, I remember doubting, but then I remember thinking, you know, I've gone through this before. And these doubts always subside and, and are, you know, over, yeah. they're overrided by the, the amount of faith that I have. That, that's always what ends up happening. And so I, you know, I know that I, I, just, I just cannot see it in my future no matter what state I'm in. Um, and this isn't the same for everybody, but for me, no matter what, what state I'm in, I can never see a future where I stray, I stray away from God. And... And that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen, but I'm lucky enough that um, that I feel stability 
with that, and not everybody can say that, especially not people who are, have unstable moods. So I'm, I, I would consider myself lucky in that sense. Yeah, it's so I mean, interesting. It's like you've you peered through the cyclical, the dynamic, the rustling motion of it all. You like mm -hmm. peered through it all, like backwards and forwards, and you said, "This is coming back. I know it's coming back, mm -hmm. but like I am making this." I'm kind of like inscribing this. I'm, I'm thinking of like a graffiti artist, like mm. on a, yeah, yeah. you know, on an important wall, saying like, like he is with me, or mm. God, like is still there, mm -hmm. and that's something that you kind of keep coming back to in, you know, in the, these shifting places Absolutely. of life. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and not, and and you know, so many people will go into way worse episodes of depression and the or or even it could even be like the same and just experience it differently the way that that these uh, illnesses affect people you know it, it affects people in different ways so I don't want you know I, I don't want people to think that everybody with bipolar disorder or depression or whatever you know um, has the same experiences as me but I consider myself lucky to always feel grounded within mm. within faith with uh, with what I struggle with so there could be people listening to this who the, they themselves may have some lived experience with a mental health challenge mm -hmm. or they have a loved one, a dear loved one who experiences a mental health challenge to some degree. What, what would you say to those people listening about faith? I would I would say understand that you know when it comes to when it, at least when it comes to mood disorders I can't speak quite as much for something along the lines of a personality disorder, um, but you know just w with mood disorders it's not um, try to look past the disorder a as much as possible not not when trying to help the person but you know when when trying to connect with the person because. That person is still in there, you know. Even though sometimes it may feel like an empty shell, or it may feel like somebody that that you know, it's like not even who they are, you know. What no matter what no matter what side it's on, um, just remember that that person is still in there, and that mm -hmm. and 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 uh, and think of think of it that way, you know. Um, they all of their experiences and and uh, what whatever is in their heart it's hard it may be harder for them to to do what they want to do in their heart but their heart functions in a different way than their mind does mm -hmm. sometimes and that's the, i think that's what it comes down to with with mental health a lot of the time is that uh you want to do the right thing and it's not always it's not always easy after actually living through the experience and understanding you know it can be hard for the person to act like who they truly are personally i i struggle with like you said looking back and looking at the ways that i that i acted during these you know during whatever mood episode and and i'm like man i really wish i didn't do that and i you know i want people to see me for who i am and not what i do that I don't want to do. I want people to see what's in my heart. So just, while it may be hard to do, and, and while it's a struggle to go through, remember that that person is still, is still there, who your loved one is still there. And, and, and if it's yourself, you are, you know, you're still there. Like you're still, <laughs> like your yeah. soul is, is separate from your mind, mm. you know? And that's true for everybody. That's true for people who don't have mental health you know problems your your spirit what's in your heart is separate from your flesh you know mm. that's that's the way i see it you just you said you, you said something very powerful that i think i think everybody needs to hear that you know cuz ev you know everybody has times where they feel like oh like that wasn't me or this isn't me mm -hmm. whether it's in a you're in a relationship that is you pull, pulling out different sides of you that you weren't expecting or you find yourself in this situation or that but just to hear that like you're still there like yeah. you're still in there uh -huh. i think that is such a 
powerful voice of faith. Like that, that is you sh- showing exercise of having faith in this other person or in yourself. Uh, and I think that's something that we should say more often. I often think about on this topic, I think about a, a verse in, I believe Romans 7, Paul says something along the lines of, um, I, I want to do what is good, <laughs> but I don't have the ability yeah. to carry it out or something along those lines, you oh, know? Yeah. And, but then, it, you know, and, and he says something like, but that's not me when I don't do what is right, you know? Like uh, that, that's yeah. so powerful. That's one of my favorite passages. It's, it's, not, it's not me doing it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's, that's, it's not an excuse and it's not, but it's absolutely true that if you are filled with the Spirit of God, then you truly do want to do what is right. And no matter what it is, whether it's mental health or anything that, that um, makes you, know, you choose to do what is wrong, you still know that what you're doing is wrong and you didn't actually want to do it, yeah. but your brain, your flesh tricked you into thinking that that's what you wanted to do. That I think um, encompasses mental health and so many other things so well. There's a beautiful bridge here from the beginning of our conversation when you were talking about being in a, a low, brought down place and not not feeling like grace and forgiveness were accessible. Mm-hmm. And here what you're talking about is grace and forgiveness. Yeah. Like that's what you're talking about. Yep. Like yeah. right now, like granting, granting yourself and granting another the grace just to be and the forgiveness to let go of the pieces that are you're holding on to that might be regrets or that might be I didn't want to do that right like mm-hmm. that's what you're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, right yeah, now yeah, like, yeah, absolutely mm. and I think everybody can relate to that well uh, I think we, we discussed before the podcast that you would uh, that you would mention the uh, nice attire that I'm wearing today. Oh. You did not bring that up. Um, I wore I wore a suit just Chris, for the podcast Chris, to find out Chris, that there's no cameras. <laughs> there's no, <laughs> no, that's not true. Uh, Chris, Christian's wearing a suit. Yeah. He looks there you go. He looks very chic. Jose is proud of you. Yeah, I heard. I heard he is. <laughs> um, I heard. Thank you, Jose. Everyone go go listen to Jose's episode if you're not ready. <laughs> Well, thanks, Christian. It's been great. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on. I had a good time. Great. Tune in next week. Hello, this is Tom from From the Platform, a Christadelphian podcast that tackles challenging topics and how we talk about them. Our aim is to bring self-awareness to the debate in uh, the Christadelphian community and instill good conversation through listening techniques you can find us on all good podcasting platforms and we are proudly supported by the wcf we look forward to you joining the conversation if you have any comments or questions you can find us on twitter and facebook